Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the Main Charitable Mechanics Association and the Mechanics Hall Library. My name is Sam Matiosian. I'm the president of the Main Charitable Mechanics Association. Um, and uh, we're here to announce uh, the new marine uh, collection at the Main Charitable Mechanics uh, Library. The uh, Main Charitable Mechanics Association was founded in uh, 1815, and uh, it was uh, originally for the um, artisan and craftsman class in Portland. So uh, it included people like uh, ship makers and rope makers and uh, blacksmiths and carpenters um, and the people who, who made all of the, uh, the things in Portland uh, and in Maine. And the library uh, here exists um, basically because that group of people uh, at the time uh, didn't have a lot of access to books. So uh, it was before uh, the public library. Um, and at the time, uh, there were private libraries in the, in the homes of usually wealthy people. And so if you were in the um, working uh, creative class, uh, you often didn't have access to books. And so the organization sort of banded together uh, in order to uh, eventually build this building and to create the library. And that was, I believe, in 1857. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, the library was moved upstairs, I think, uh, around 1886 um, in a major renovation of the building. And so this, that's the library that we're in today. Uh, and the, uh, the collection in the library historically has been a general purpose uh, collection, including uh, fiction, nonfiction, history, philosophy. Um, uh, but uh, in modern times, um, we've found that there is an interest amongst the sort of new generation of uh, the membership of the mechanics to have a little bit more of a focus on uh, craftsmanship. Um, we, you know, we have a public library. Uh, people have access to lots and lots of books via the internet and, um, you know, Amazon. Uh, and so we've been discussing as a board, uh, you know, over the last few years about whether or not it would be possible to, to shift the collection uh, here in that direction a little bit. And so we were pretty excited um, when uh, Alex Agnew uh, with uh, Ocean Navigator uh, came to talk to us about this collection of uh, marine um, books that they had had that uh, includes uh, topics on the craft, the, the science of uh, building uh, marine crafts, um, navigating, uh, and a number of other interesting topics in that space. And we thought that fit really well with um, sort of a the history of the organization and and be the direction that we were hoping to, hoping to take it. We're really hoping that the Main Charitable Mechanics Association will continue to thrive uh, in the coming years and we're hoping to continue to build the community uh, of in Portland of the people who are passionate about making things and providing them with uh, you know useful pieces of information and a space to do that kind of work. Uh, one of the lines in the original mission that we kept in the updated mission was that the Maine Charitable Mechanics Association exists to support the diffusion of useful knowledge. Um, and that's one of those things that just, it sort of always stuck with me, what, how do we, what is, you know, useful knowledge, um, but that the notion of making things and uh, of a particular kind of knowledge being useful for the um, progress of civilization was sort of core to the original mission, and, and that's what we hope to continue. So um, <clears throat> we have a few uh, other people speaking. Alex Agnew um, with Ocean Navigator will introduce uh, the gift and, you know, how they came to have this collection. Uh, we're going to have um, Anestis Fodiatis, who is the outgoing chair of the uh, library committee and a member of the board here. Main Charitable, um, Pat Larrabee, who is the librarian for Main Charitable, and Pam Plum, who is chair of the uh, programming committee at, at Main Charitable. So without further ado, 
thank you for coming, everyone, and uh, I'd like to introduce Alex Agnew. Thanks, Sam. Uh, it's great to, I've never met you, it's great to see that there's visionary leadership at the helm here. It's also fantastic to be back in this beautiful room. I just love being here. Um, I've been the publisher of Ocean Navigator and Professional Mariner for 15 years and worked at the magazines for 30 years. And 30 years ago, we started building a collection of marine books. Some of them came through as review copies, uh, but then once they started coming in, once we created this library, books started to flow in at the rate of, I don't know, five a week or something. And so we ended up with uh, a pretty enormous collection of books, most of which are uh, in the fields, as Sam has already alluded to, of shipbuilding, rope making, he referred to, uh, navigation, seamanship, meteorology, mostly vessel operations and management. Um, in 1991, we started a magazine called Professional Mariner, which is for licensed ship captains and engineers, licensed by the Coast Guard. There's an enormous coming retirement wave, and we're going to need a lot of new youngsters joining our industry. So we as much as we loved our library, which for us was a private library in our offices here in Portland, we decided it made a lot more sense to make it public. And we were absolutely thrilled to have it be part of the Makers Hall and the Marine Charitable Mechanics Association. Our offices are only a few steps away. We walked here to this event, so we can still visit our collection. But now we can share it with all of you and your friends and your children and your grandchildren. And so we're, we're really, really excited about that. Um, I don't want to scare you all, the librarians here, um, Pat, but there's a lot more books out there that may come as part of this collection and we hope as part of collections of others here. We have a chart collection of the entire world we haven't even talked about. We have photographs, we have magazines. So we think that this library can become something truly special, it, and it already is. It's the only marine, it's the only private, publicly accessible marine library of general interest in the state. So it's specialized, but it's also very broad. It's for yachtsmen who want to learn how to sail around the world, for kids who want to get into our industry. So today is the first day that we're announcing that this collection is public. However, it has been public now for almost a month. The library has made it fully accessible so that anybody who wants to come down can come down this afternoon during library hours. I think one of the things that we hope with this collection is that we'll also find funding so that the library can be kept open more than just the few hours that it is now. Right now, it's open about 15 hours a week. We hope that someday it'll be open 40 hours a week, including Saturday mornings, uh, so that kids can use it. So with that, I'd just like to uh, say thank you for uh, taking the collection on, and welcome to all of you out there who want to use it. And um, I'd just like to introduce Ernestus, who's the chair of the library, and, and thank him. Well, uh, thank you, Alex. I, I think your, your donation has, has been a fantastic addition to the library. Uh, I'm excited about it on, on several levels. One, it, it serves our, our mission of building a, a, a repository for the diffusion of useful knowledge, and I think the library itself can be a very powerful tool for that. Um, as you spoke to, I think that the start of, of uh, this marine collection is going to provide a, a great foundation and we'll find other donors, other people who want to help build that capacity and build that resource of, of maker-related marine topics for Portlanders and Mainers to use. Uh, I think also you've been instrumental in getting us to think uh, maybe a little differently than we had before, uh, that this collection gives us an example of how a maker community can engage with the MCMA, and particularly with its library, and expand the, the, the resource we have here. So I think we're starting to think differently about how we might talk to other, uh, other groups, other groups that may have 
private libraries that want to share them with a broader community, that want to invest in this, uh, this, this work that we're doing here at the MCMA to build a resource and to, to build a community among makers and craftsmen. So thank you very much for the collection, uh, and uh, we look forward to working with you on it. I'm Pat Larrabee. I'm the librarian here. And I remember well the day that Anestis and I went down to Ocean Navigator to look at the books. It was in late uh, July, and it was a very exciting time, actually. They're beautiful books. Um, I looked at them and thought it was a great idea, as did Anestis, and I also realized it would be a lot of work. But I was kind of up for the challenge, and so uh, we put the plan into action. And 53 books were delivered with the help of I think Art was one of the, delivered uh, in early August, I think it was around the 12th, and we started working on the books. Now I knew, I already had two volunteers, but they have their jobs to do. So I knew I needed two more volunteers, and they just kind of popped up out of the sky, and one of them was Connie Harrison. Come up here, Connie. <laughs> Connie Harrison uh, had volunteered here before, and the time was right for her to volunteer. So she came on board, and she's been the dynamo that, that drove us to do what we've done in a mere four months, actually. She unpacked the f 53 boxes, wrote an initial card on them, and then uh, she drove me because I had to get them on the shelf. So I, I had cleared the shelf, uh, done some serious weeding. Beverly, wherever she is, right Beverly Stewart, she... <laughs> She helped me with withdrawing the books. Um, we handled a lot of books. We actually withdrew about a thousand books. Uh, it was fiction that no longer popular, no longer really important. Um, we still do have fiction in the A's and B's, but not as many as we did. So, uh, uh, Carol, and then Carolyn came on the scene. Carolyn Sloat hiding in the back there. She was one of the two that I needed that just appeared, basically. Um, she pulls the cards, uh, she files the cards. There's a lot of handling with, with withdrawing books and also accessing new ones. So I uh, took the cards that Connie made on all the new books and we started a special file. And so we ha we're at the point now where we have them on the shelf. Uh, they're in, some of them are in a specific alphabetical order, the A's, the B's, the C's. The rest of them, we can find them, the D's are together, the, E's and so forth. So uh, if there is a specific book uh, that we want, we can find it. Donna has been has the job <laughs> of typing a list. And so she's been working away at that. We push her. There's always a pile of her books to do. But the end is in sight with these books. It actually is. So we've gained a lot of ground. Uh, we have them on the shelf. They're accessible. I have cataloged. Um, I'm not sure how many, 25 or 50. There's a, a paper on the table over there for any of you who would like to, uh, to check and see uh, of those that are cataloged. Any of them can circulate. Uh, if you see something, you're welcome to look down the aisle where they are. Uh, if anything, anybody wants to take any of them out, we can do a quick um, setup so you can take them, so that you can take them out. They're beautiful books. If you look around the room, I've displayed uh, as many as I could find room for. The Sea there, for example, and just all around beautiful, beautiful titles, exceptional books. One that so impressed me was a beautiful book on plankton. It just kind of like, whoever heard of a book on plankton? A gorgeous <laughs> book. Yeah, I guess if you're a mariner, you're, in, you're involved with the sea, it's very commonplace, and I knew what it was, but I never expected to see a whole book. Beautiful books on tall ships. Um, but there are also books that the ordinary person would like, a uh, non-marine uh, type person, just, just good reading. This is an example, Wayward Sailor, uh, in search of the real Tristan Jones. I had no idea who he is, but I'm getting an, an education on uh, the sea and mariners. And I just I brought this because on, in each of the books we plan to put a book plate, which uh, it says Ocean Navigator Marine Collection. 2016, so they'll all be designated. They'll be kept separate in the collection uh, for now, and uh, they're easily accessible to everybody. Uh, did I leave anybody out? I don't think so. So now my job is to catalog the books. Uh, I'm working on it. 
I figure it'll take me about a year to finish it. That's a lot of books. But um, I still have my volunteers uh, to do the filing and do the typing and so forth. So we're doing pretty good. So that's all I have to say on the subject. Other than anytime you want to come in and look at, find something, you can check it out if you're a member. <laughs> Thank you. Pat and her crew are the ones who make it all possible, actually. It would still be in boxes on the first floor if it were not for these great folks who have made it all uh, come together here. My name is Pam Plum. Um, I'm the chair of the programming committee here. And my only uh, addition to today's comments is that, that we see these, this collection as the beginning of some programmatic activities which will be in the field of makers in the marine industry. And we're only in the process now of doing our research to understand what's already being done. And then we'll have a much better idea how programming from our particular organization can be useful and can be helpful uh, in that field. And so that's really uh, the only point that I wanted to make, that we're going to run with this collection and develop some programming to help the industry, to bring young people into the industry, uh, to, in general, spread the knowledge of what goes on. It's, a, it's an enormous industry in Maine. Um, I also have the pleasure of doing a couple of things. One, we have a letter here from the Maine Maritime Museum, uh, someone who had hoped to come and couldn't come. And so it's a brief letter, I promise. I will read it to you. Uh, it's from Amy uh, Lent, the executive director of the Maine Maritime Museum. A dear Mr. Mattiosian, otherwise known as Sam. Uh, Maine Maritime Museum is proud to endorse Navigator Publishing's gift of its collection of marine trade books to the Maine Charitable Mechanic Association Library in Portland. The donation testifies to the vibrancy of Maine's maritime industries in the 21st century. These trades, especially boat building, fishing, and commercial exchange, are the continuation of a Maine tradition of maritime endeavor that was already thousands of years old when the Wabanaki greeted the first European to come ashore in the 16th century. Maine Maritime Museum wishes uh, the uh, Maine Charitable Mechanic Association and those who use this maritime library every success as they add to the legacy of Maine's rich maritime history. So that um, is a letter from them. We have a, a few folks uh, that I would like to just briefly introduce. First of all, anyone who's on the board of Maine Charitable Mechanic Association, would you just raise your hand so people know where you are? and they can come and talk to you. We have some here, here, there's one, and over here. Feel free to chat with those folks afterwards and ask about the organization and what it's up to. Um, I'd also like to introduce Susan Swanton, who's here, right there, who's the director of the Maine Maritime Trades Association. We've had some wonderful conversations about how this organization could be useful. Uh, Tim Queenie, Ocean Navigator, where are you? Right there. Thank you, Ocean Navigator. We're glad you're here. Um, Michael McAllister, Interim Director of Sale, there you are, right there. Uh, and Maddie Oates, Maddie Oates is the Director of the Tall Ships Program in Maine. And did you want to say just a quick word about the connection to this? Uh, no, we're just very pleased to be, uh, be able to be connected with this. Uh, we're very happy to be working in the offices of Ocean Navigator, which is how we have our connection and our uh, board president is also Alex Agnew. So. Um, we, we, as been said before, we've recognized that there is the potential for uh, a workplace shortage of uh, maritime professionals in the near future, and we're a maritime state. That's what we do. We go to sea, and we go to sea in boats. Um, so hopefully with this library and the accessibility of it uh, and the, the ever-expanding outreach of the uh, Maine Charitable Mechanics Association, we'll be able to bring um, more, more young people in, get them interested in the, in the sea that's right at their doorsteps. Uh, and Tall Ships Portland, our mission, uh, among many things, is to connect our youth with the sea. Uh, and one of those ways is on boats, and the other way is through books, because some of the greatest stories ever written have been written about uh, people going to sea. So hopefully with the opening of this library, we can, uh, we can make those stories more well known. So thank you again for having us here. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Uh, and what, thank you. One of the other connections we're trying to make, of course, is with young people who would be interested potentially in the marine trades. And we also have here Linda Roth uh, from Thornton Academy, 
and they do career exploration and they have had a number of programs involving boats and boat making and pieces of boats. I've also had the pleasure of visiting at PAS, the same kind of program, and there is actually a lot going on. So finally, I just want to thank people for coming. I want you to explore the collection, which you can see some of it around you. You can go back, as Pat invited you, back to the place where the rest of the books are. Uh, we want you to enjoy Maine Charitable, uh, and if you aren't a member, you might even think about joining. I'd be happy to help you do that. Uh, people are welcome to come use this collection uh, in the library during library hours. I think the general public can do that, but if you want to take a book out, um, then we'd love to help you become a member. <laughs>